Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest because, you know, it's not often, Scott Todd, we get a guest that can literally overnight change your life, right? Right. And this is that guest. Um, and I'm really, really excited. It's very innovative. Uh, I can't wait to get into it. But before we get into it, I would be remiss. I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Scott Todd, from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. So, Scott, are you ready for this? Mark? You know, the thing is, is that you can never run out of what this company provides. You really can't. This, this company, it's like, it's like you can never get tired of hearing I love you, right? <laughs> so let's, let's talk to Dean Sukis, the CEO of Megillah Loans from megillahloans.com. Dean, how are you? I'm very good. Thanks, Mark and Scott. So Dean, if we were in an elevator and it was kind of awkward, but I looked at your, you know, your badge and said, McGill Loans CEO. And I said, Dean, what's McGill Loans? How would you answer me? Uh, the shortest version is we are kayak, the equivalent of kayak for business and home loans. Or as others like to say, we are match.com for business and home loans. Or if you're even younger, we're Tinder for business and home loans. Depends on your, uh, maybe your age. I say we're kayak. Okay. I, I can buy with kayak. Now, mm -hmm. let's say, for example, that um, I need $22 million. Okay. Right. And I want to go out and I'm going to buy some commercial real estate. Correct. Um, why wouldn't I just go out and call my buddies and say, hey, I'm going to start a, a fund. Let's raise 22 million bucks. Take some of your self-directed IRA money, your QRP money. Let's make it rain. I'm going to give you this percentage of a return and let's go on, right? Yeah, I mean, you can certainly do that. I mean, I'm, as you know, my background, I'm a real estate developer uh, by trade. Uh, that's what I've been doing prior to Megillah. And you can certainly do that. Again, that's a financing tool that I've used and a lot of real estate investors have used. Most of the time you do that because you don't have the ability or don't think you have the ability to get FDIC insured bank financing, which is, of course, going to be a lot more advantageous to the sponsor, guys like myself and guys like you. Okay, so why is it more advantageous? And why would somebody like... Um you know, on the Big O Loans platform, give someone like me $22 million FDIC that, you know, might not have a track record or uh, might not have yeah, great yeah, credit I mean, or whatever it is. Of course. Or, I mean, yeah. McGill is, uh, McGill is not um, going to, uh, is not the fairy godmother and we can't <laughs> make it, we can't make it happen. Just like you can't go to kayak and say, just staying with the kayak example, I want to fly from San Francisco to Paris, nonstop, direct. I want to fly first class for $400. You might want it. Just because Kayak doesn't give you that response doesn't mean Kayak's not working. Kayak's working fine. Kayak is showing you the opportunities that are available for you to accomplish that task today. And it changes from day to day as airlines have different promotions and different needs and different schedules. They might have a flight that's not very full and they run a sale. How would you know? You don't know. You gotta go to Kayak because we're not that smart. We don't have the ability to search every single airline's websites and you might not be aware of a certain website let's, or a certain airline like, I don't know, uh, Lufthansa. Let's say you're not familiar with Lufthansa. It didn't come to your mind, then there's Lufthansa running a sale. Similarly, in Megilla, there are 6,000 FDIC insured brands in the United States. That's a lot. It's a lot more than airlines. It's a lot more than cars. 
and we have countless tools to help us plan a trip, buy an airline uh, ticket, or find a white Audi A4, a 2005 with 20,000 miles on it. I mean, there's a bunch of car sites that'll help you do that. Right. So if we flip that example around and we say, hey, here's Scott Todd. He's got liquidity. Okay. He's got great credit. Okay. Right. He's got a track record. Correct. Why should he have to hustle and go to his local bank or um, start talking to his friends? Right. And, and going through that song and dance when he can just go to McGill Loans and all of a sudden he's got 6,000 options. Is that right? Yeah. Is that the way to yeah. look at it? Of course, McGill doesn't have all 6,000. It's going to take us a while to get all 6,000. But we're approaching, we have well over 100 brands and hundreds of loan officers. Of course, within each brand, we have multiple loan officers. You have a residential, you have a refi, you have a, a commercial real estate greater than 20 million, commercial re real estate refi. I mean, you got a loan officer at a brand for every variety of loan. And so if you're Scott Todd and you say, well, I have a banking relationship with, let's say Scott has a relationship with, or thinks he has a relationship with three banks. Okay, that's three. And to get a, uh, um, to see what those three relationships can do for your particular need at that moment, despite the fact you have a relationship with them, you're gonna go and fill out all their forms, give them three years of tax returns, all your K-1s, et cetera, et cetera. Wait, talk, that's the typical process. If you're even in Scott Todd's category of having the relationship. We're making the assumption in this example, I have three relationships. Not everyone has three. Some people don't even have one. And so you put your loan in Megilla. You don't say your name is Scott Todd. That's the beauty of it. You do tell Megilla, this is the asset that I'm looking to buy or refinance. These are the metrics of the asset. Then you move on to the metrics of Scott Todd. Scott Todd financially looks like this. We don't know if it's a man, a woman, African-American, white, Greek. We don't, McGillah doesn't care, and we don't think anyone should care what you look like, what your gender is, what your race is. I want to know what the asset looks on a financial scale and what Scott Todd looks like on a financial scale. And the loan officers get push notifications when a loan meeting their criteria enters the system. They use their smartphone. They review the proposal or the request and they make you a proposal. It's that simple. So, so, sorry, so basically what they're doing is they're looking at and they're saying, okay, well, this is an asset class that we would lend to or not lend to, so we'll either right. engage or not. And then from there, they might send me a, a generic term sheet. It's not necessarily an approval, it's just a hypothetical term sheet, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. it's a little more than that. It's not, it's not a generic term sheet. It's, it's a, a generic term sheet would be like some other websites you may go to to say, let me check rates. Well, that's generic, right? There's a rate sheet that somebody gave uh, a website that says, okay, these are the rates from this institution now. That's not what McGill is giving you because a live red-blooded person reviewed your proposal, your request, and made you a proposal and added notes in the proposal to expand on it to say, this is a fixed rate option for five years. And in the notes, they're gonna say, you know, if you connect with me on Megillah, we have some other opportunities as well that we can explore. We can explore a LIBOR-based option or whatever. So it's not a generic response. If they don't like the asset class or don't feel comfortable, um, they won't make your proposal. And we see it happen all the time. And so then, um, so am I, am I, I mean, I'm still constrained to their like loan to value type of, of stuff. Of I mean, I, I'm still gotta, I still gotta come up with money for my, for my portion of it. It's not like they're going to give me a hundred percent loan to value. Of I've I mean, life's with... not like life isn't fair and life isn't easy. McGill is just making it a lot easier and a lot fairer because we're giving you the borrower access to information that there's no other way to acquire. You're lucky if you can get proposals from, I mean, wouldn't you be happy if you got three proposals from three different FDIC insured banks for a certain real estate project? How long would that take you to get? It's not a day. It's weeks, months. I, I don't know how long that would take. You're going to have to go through the whole process. Right. And what have you, what have you accomplished? You have a handful of proposals.
So, so Magella gives me a response in how long? Uh, we give the commercial loans, we give the lenders 10 days. In reality, a residential loan is gonna be done in about 24 hours. Uh, commercial, depending on the complexity and the size, could take the whole 10 days. Are there any commercial asset yeah, classes you don't like or FDIC insurers don't like? I, I, no, I would imagine asset, land would not be one of them. Land is one of them. And um, land is definitely one of them. And I'm a land guy and you know, we don't always have the luxury of getting loans from FDIC insured lenders. Um, the asset classes that do the, ba the best in Megillah, of course, and the ones the banks want are real estate based assets. So whether that's um, commercial, office, multifamily, a single family rehab flip, um, and of course all the um, consumer side of things, purchase, rebuy, second home, that kind of a, we started it as a business only platform. We expanded to residential, single family residential uh, a couple months in. There was just, every business owner and investor has a house. So they wanted to refinance their house and their second homes through McGillip. So, so Dean, from a, from a business aspect, your search engine for loans, Correct. right? You don't, you're free, no hidden fees. Correct. Well, how, how is Dean making money? Subscriptions from the banks. So the banks, the banks. Uh, yeah, I'm not a real estate broker. Um, I'm not a loan broker. Of course, we use brokers in our real estate lives. Um, Megillah is doing things a little differently. We're saying we have access to the data. We have access to the inventory of loans. And in order to make it so that a real estate investor doesn't see using Megillah as increasing the cost of their loan, because as a real estate developer myself, I wouldn't want that. What are we doing? We're saying lenders, this is a much more efficient way to find Mark or Scott or Dean or somebody who looks like us in a financial sense. And for that efficiency, they're willing to pay a monthly fee. It's, I love it. Is this, is this a VC backed uh, company? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, it will be, um, but we, um, because we had careers before and we're not, uh, nothing against uh, 18 and 22 year old kids, you know, making innovation. It's amazing what they do. Um, this is a little different because in order to have determined what works for banks, what works for real estate professionals, you kind of have to have lived it. Otherwise, I don't think we would have come up, I know we wouldn't have come up with a system in the format that we built it. I so just wouldn't have you're had so, You're solving the, the raising money pain point efficiently with, with, with artificial intelligence and big data. Is that correct? Correct. I mean, it's a pure economics. I was an econ major in college and we always say it's pure efficiency. We're trying to make a system with the least amount of friction possible. And we feel that at least for our system, the brokerage commission gets in the way where I'm sitting there and I say, I'm, I'm basically playing cops and robbers at that point, right? I say, Megillah, we introduced Scott Todd to Bank of America. What happened to the loan? And Bank of America may say, it didn't go through, okay? Technically true, maybe, except that they didn't refinance Scott Todd's multifamily request they found in Megillah for whatever reason. Maybe Scott decided to move on or he dropped the property. But I've already introduced Scott Todd to Bank of America. He's already talking to the guy or woman. And in the conversation, they did a different loan and refinanced the building for Scott Todd that he wasn't even, didn't even realize that he could benefit himself from. And this has happened in Megillah on many occasions where the original request, just like business in general, you don't know where a meeting is gonna lead. All meetings are good meetings. You don't know what's gonna come of it. it. Happens all the time. You sit down with somebody, you realize 10 minutes in, this is probably a waste of time. Five minutes after that, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you, this person that I was having a meeting with about one topic, and now I'm gonna do business with you about something that it was completely unrelated. And that happens in Megillah all the time. Now, what happens for the guys like, you know, let's say me, right? Um, maybe I've got an asset that FDIC insured companies don't like. Is there a second 
tier of this where let's say that I'm like my, my good buddy out here works for a billionaire and he's got a, he's got a, you know, a private office. And one of the things they like to do is private loans, right? So okay. the banks, the banks pass. And now you're looking now, instead of getting a loan at say, you know, three to 7%, now you're looking at 10 to 13% with a point or two, right? Does McGill, you know, go that route as well? Yes. And it actually happens the way, similarly to the way you described. I mean, everyone, most people, unless they have really quick, really, um, really intense time constraints are better served with an FDIC insured lender. That's why we built it. You're going to get the best rate. You're probably going to get the best terms. It may be a little more arduous, probably more documentation and take longer, but that's really where you want to be. And like you said, there is a second tier where not all loans are going to fit in that category. Um, especially if it's a business loan, let's say you haven't been in business for three years. Let's say you've been in business for two years and three months. Well, a lot of banks have a hard rule, hard and fast rule. You got to be in business for three years. Well, Magilla wants to help you. Again, we're throwing a, a wide net. So for the lenders who have set their default search criteria to say, I'm willing to look at all businesses, not just businesses three years and over, they're gonna get a push notification. They're gonna be aware of your loan in the system without you having to go knock on the door of the branch. And in a lot of cases, like you said, there is no branch. How are you gonna find them? So how is a guy in Sacramento gonna know that there's a private lender in San Diego who has the capacity to do the loan I'm looking for today. It's impossible. They don't know you exist, you don't know they exist. It's two ships passing in the night. It's not gonna happen. So we all rely on word of mouth, like you said in the beginning of the conversation. I asked my buddy, I asked my friend, I asked my colleague, I asked a fellow real estate investor or developer, who, are you, who do you use? That's okay, right? We, we learn from our peers. But your peer only has visibility, again, to so many lenders. There's too many. There's too many. Now, now in this world, right, there's always, we always got to three C's, right? We got collateral, we've got credit worthiness, and we got character, right? How important in your world are those three C's or is one weighted, which I'd imagine would be the collateral more than the others? It's yeah. I think it's the collateral. I think the collaterals collaterals King. Um, it's kind of like when you tried to get into college, um, and, or, or when I went to law school, let's say, and I had a buddy who had a better GPA than I had. Okay. So what do you have? You have the same things. You're going to college or you're going to law school and you have your GPA, right? What I do for the last four years, the results of the test, right? SAT, LSAT, uh, you know, whatever test you're taking. And then what's your character, right? What does my essay look like and all that? If you could only get one of those, which one would you choose? Well, I'd choose the test. That's the only fair equalizer in that example, right? And in my case, it worked. I did extremely well in the test. I got into a lot of places. My friend who had a, admittedly a better GPA than I had did not as well in the test and he got in basically not too many places. Similarly in real estate, I would choose the collateral. <laughs> you just would, you want all three, but if you can't have all three, that's the better way to go. Scott Todd, I, I think Dean's onto something. Yeah, I think so. I think that, uh, <laughs> I think that um, I think that the the fact that you're mat you're matching uh, lenders, you know, in this large space um, to, to the consumers and making them find people that they don't even know exist, uh, banks that you don't even know exist. I think that's a a good move. I was driving down the street the other day uh, in my own neighborhood. And I look over to the left and I'm stopping at a stoplight. Look over to the left and there's this, there's this bank. I've never even heard of them before. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like millennial bank or something. You know, they probably have like one branch. Okay. And I was thinking like, well, 
man, here's a, here's a branch that, uh, or here's a bank. Let's say they have one branch or a few branches and they really, really, really could use, um, could use, you know, so, some business loans, right? Cause, cause they've got money to move at the same time. They're going to make money off of this, this asset class. And I would have never have found them had I not just been driving. Right. So, you know, we always think that, you know, it's bank of America or the big banks, on your platform, are most of these people, are they smaller banks or bigger banks? Um, it's, it's pretty much everybody. It's, I'd say right now, the bigger banks have been very receptive to Megillah. So we do have a lot of the big banks, a lot of the ones, the name brand banks that you would expect. Um, we also have a lot of community banks. Um, the banks that are even more interesting for Megillah are the, let's say it's a community bank that has a national charter. Well, that's the best for, for my system. That's the best, right? You don't have a lot of brick and mortar. Um, you're maybe known in your community as a very solid community bank, but because of historical accident or how the bank came to be, they have a national charter so they can loan in the 50 States. Well, at that point, it, Megillah becomes a very powerful tool for both the consumer and the bank. Because who loses in that? Nobody. Nobody loses. If you're in Texas, why can't you get a loan from a small community bank that is physically based in California? There's no now, reason not to. Now, I mean, like some, some national banks, let's, let, let me pick on Bank of America, for example. Bank of America or Wells Fargo. I know that there's certain asset classes that, that they'll say, yeah, yeah, we do that. But then in reality, they don't. Right. So yeah. is that something that if I put this asset class through and they really don't have the desire to do it, are they going to come back to me and waste my time? Or are they just going to not respond back to me? You know what we've seen, Scott, is we've seen it play out in the chart. So we have something that we, you know, trademarked, we call it a mag chart, you know, for Megilla, a Megilla chart. It's basically a comparison chart that, any person would want to create for themselves. Um, if you had the ability to get multiple proposals, what would you do with them? They're all going to be on different kinds of term sheets, um, a different pagination, different formats, right? So you're probably going to take those term sheets and synthesize them into a little chart for yourself. Well, Megillah just does that for you. So when the banks put in the proposal, we present it to the borrower in an easy to read, easy to compare chart. And the bank that really isn't that excited about the asset class, we find that it's very obvious in the chart. You can see it in the terms. Uh, something will stick out. It's going to be pretty obvious that they're not that jazzed up about the asset class, or you'll see it in their notes. So when the borrower puts in the, their loan, they get to put notes. It's your opportunity to pitch yourself, right? And we make the notes compulsory. And we make it compulsory because it's for your own good. <laughs> the more you can say about it, you have to sell it a little bit. And the banks do the same thing, They're selling themselves to you. If a bank doesn't put a lot of effort into it, they probably don't care that much. They care a little bit because they made your proposal. And you'll see in the chart another bank that will make it very clear to you that they have room in their portfolio for that type of asset. And that's usually how it plays out. Cool. And you're, you're talking about something that, again, the consumer can't know. So if I ask my buddy, the real estate professional, who's the best in town? Okay, that's strike number one. Why am I looking just in town? I shouldn't look just in town. I shouldn't look in just California. I should look everywhere. But you would say, who's the best in town to do a $10 million office refi? Well, if the gentleman says, XYZ bank. It's not that he's necessarily wrong. That might have been right when he had the experience, but that was February. It's now May. So what's happened in the last quarter? Well, I don't know. You don't know. Your friend doesn't know. Nobody knows. The only person who knows is the head of the bank who's balancing their portfolio. And there's no neon sign that says not so hot on office loans this quarter. <laughs> Right? You don't know that. But Megillah will find out for you. And it'll be pretty obvious in the chart. And if a bank skipped over on you, they probably skipped. And if you walked into the branch, 
They might tell you they can do the loan, but once you go through it all, they're probably not. Right. So, I mean, a lot of times we see banks where the large banks have skipped over on a loan and the, the borrower only is getting proposals from smaller community banks. Does that mean McGill didn't work? No, it means McGill worked. <laughs> it's telling you for some reason, it doesn't mean you're a bad borrower or a bad loan. It's just for some reason, you're missing one element that an, a big national FDIC insured bank wants to see. Right. Okay. And you don't have it. I, I just went through the system while you guys were talking. It was very simple. It's um, pretty simple. And, and enjoyable. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it's, no, we're trying to make it, it's, we're trying to walk a line between approachable because banks are intimidating, right? We all know that. I mean, I don't care how long you've been doing it. Banks are intimidating. So we're trying to make it less intimidating, but at the same time, it's not a joke. This is serious. This is a serious topic, right? So, you know, we don't have dancing people or people jumping around on the site. Like we want it to be inviting, but take it seriously. Like you wouldn't be here if you weren't serious. And, and if you're not serious about it, you know, we may not be the platform for you. But if you really, really want to refinance your house or really want to buy that vacation home, or if you're a larger investor, you want to buy a $65 million um, retail center, yes. And why wouldn't you come to us? Well, you would say, well, I already have relationships with Key Bank and Wells Fargo and uh, U.S. Bank. Three. There's 6,000. You, you've rattled off three. And how do you know, and we see this also in Megillah, within a large bank, there's different silos. It's possible that your asset and your profile fits into two different silos at the same bank. So there are times when a proposal gets, a loan gets two proposals from the same brand. Well, how can that happen? Because they're from different sides of the bank. One's the real estate divisions and one's the, uh, whatever they want to call themselves, the personal wealth division. It doesn't matter. Right. And, and each of them have different criteria, and the terms will, can be and often are different. Same branch, same bank. So Dean, one more question before we get to the tip of the week. Why would I go to Megillah if I need money and not go to something like, um, you know, some real estate, like let's say realty shares, like a real estate crowdfunding site. What, are the major differences? Um, well, the biggest difference is again, we like to we like to align ourselves with the concept of kayak, where technically any lender, whether it's an online lender like Cabbage or On Deck or other aggregators, right, are all falling falling under the umbrella of Megillah. Megillah's trying. We are not a lender. We're not giving you the money and we're not trying to give you the money. We're giving you a safe and that's important, a safe, honest place where we don't have an influence over the outcome. We are trying to make a very, very efficient and friction free system for you to see all your, all your options. And those options may be from crowdfunding sites. They could be from all lenders. They could be from investors, like you said, who are going to take a point or a couple points and, you know, take an equity stake in the company. Um, of course, it started as an FDIC insured lenders platform. And I think that's always going to be its main focus. But our goal is to make sure that you today may need an alt lender. A year from now, hopefully, maybe you don't. But two years from now or your, your internal portfolio looks different and you can support um, larger debt loads and you're gonna grow over time. I mean, I've been doing, I've been doing real estate for decades. I couldn't do 20 years ago what I can do today. I'm a different person. I've, I have different skills and I have different experience levels and Megilla wants to grow with you. So the market will dictate what your best fit is today in 2017 and in 2018, come back. It might be different. We're going to have more lenders. You're going to look different. The economy is going to be different, right? Interest rates will be different. And 
Um, McGill is free and it's easy. So there's no reason not to keep trying. We don't run your credit. How can we? We don't know your social security number. That's important. We don't wanna know your social security number. You're gonna give your social security number to the bank that you choose to have a further conversation with. You're in control. If you get 15 proposals and you don't like any of the 15, don't act. Nothing happens. You don't have to throw your cell phone away because it won't stop ringing, right? This is a businessman and a businesswoman's game. You don't have time to take phone calls from salespeople. You want to get down to doing business. And if that's buying an office building, get to it. If you want to refinance your house, do it. That's the point. I, I love the model. I love the way you're leveraging time, right? And, um, and making this simple. It, it, I think the kayak analogy is really apropos for this, actually. Um, it's great. Dean, you're a big deal. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> nice job. So, um, all right, we're going to put you on the spot now and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, uh, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? I would say, and this is kind of the type of person I am, I would pick your least, um, you know, look in the mirror, find your, your, where you're honestly, you're the weakest in. If it's accounting or statistics or even uh, basic real estate legal concepts, if you don't know the difference between, uh, you know, tenants in common and a joint tenancy. And, you know, these are basic concepts that come up and you want to sound as intelligent as you possibly can when you're in meetings. You want to project confidence. And if you don't know something, you want to power through it, project it, and then you'll figure it out after. So I would suggest going to lynda.com and lynda.com has, uh, it's a great resource to learn anything that you need, whether it's coding, uh, legal, um, to the most basic, to the most extreme. And if you feel in your heart of hearts that your ability to make complicated spreadsheets is compromised, don't live that way. Go to, go to lynda.com and dedicate, you know, when your kids are, are out at a friend's house or something, dedicate some time to yourself. Go in a quiet room in your house or your office this weekend. Pick one topic and learn it. All right. And, great tip. Yeah. And just, I mean, you just, it's important to know, to find your weaknesses and, and we all have many <laughs> and, and bolster them up as much as you can. All right. Lynda.com. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, have you ever uh, needed to count down something like, you know, like you have this big date, something's happening on this day and you want to know like, um, you know, like how many days are left? Well, my tip of the week is to look at the um, Mac store, the Mac Apple store at waiting list, waiting list. And All what right, it will I'm checking do, this out. And what it will do is on your desktop at the top on the menu bar, it will put another, like an icon and you can put in special events like, hey, this is, this is a day. So maybe it's your birthday. Maybe it's a trip. Maybe it's boot camp, right? And you can just pop it down and you can see like how many days are left right down to the uh, minutes, seconds. Uh, it's a countdown clock. I like it. Have you seen the death clock, Scott? Yes. I love the death clock. <laughs> this, this is like fun compared to the death clock. Yeah, see? All right. I'm in. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to count down how many days left I have to live plus days to boot camp. Boot camp, the next boot camp, you know, so that, uh, or how long it's going to take McGill loans FDIC lenders to approve my loan. Hey, they got 10 days, right? They got 10 days. They got 10 yeah. days. So, so I can, I can create that as a countdown. But, yeah. But Scott, isn't this going to be distracting? I already have the attention span. No, it's at the top. It's only when you need it. Like uh, how many days till boot camp? Oh, okay. I got it. I guess, I mean, you could ask Alexa how many days until whatever. Oh, I should have said her name. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Scott Todd, you're not supposed to do that. You can't say the word. Yeah, see, it's bad. Alexa, buy Mark a gift. No, no, no. It's, it's, I got earbuds in. She can't hear. 
Oh, okay. In that case. Alexa, return the drone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is great. Uh, my tip of the week is learn more about the kayak of lending at mcgilla.com. I'll have uh, links to it. Yeah, mcgilla.com. Um, mcgilla.loans.com. I'm, I'm sorry. mcgilla.loans.com. There's also an iPhone app and a Android app, which is surprising since so few people are on Android. <laughs> but... I mean, do people do people with Androids get loans? They they do they do. We have a lot of Android users. You be, it's it's not just an iPhone game. Yes. No kidding. <laughs> who who would who would have thunk? Who would have I, thunk? I, I mean, thunk? you know, unbelievable. <laughs> wow, it's a changing world, Scott Todd. Sa- save your hate mail. I'm just kidding. With we're Android. all just kidding. We love you, Android users. One, the <laughs> the one of you listening to this. Um. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. Look, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like Adine Sukas is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Don't forget, just like we were talking about, you can always make more money. You can't get more time. Start automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek uh to, to hear that scott i just pressed the button and just put out 124 ads i got it boom all right dean are we good we're good we're good scott, thanks a lot for you. thank you scott are we good we're good mark are we, are we skipping it yeah we gotta skip it all right all right listen listeners thank you let freedom, freedom ring, ring. all go. right thanks dean thank you both